Good evening, everybody. Uh, it's uh, Dr. Dimitri Zanis from uh, Institut Curie, Paris, France. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers uh, for this uh, invitation. I'm very glad to be on the web today. I was asked to treat the subject dealing with sarcomas from A to Z. And for this presentation, I would like um, to thank very much the head of our department, Dr. Sylvie Bonvalo, a very well-known authority in uh, sarcomas, for uh, all the data she provided to help me with this presentation. So I have divided uh, the presentation to mostly two parts, to uh, extremity sarcomas, and then we'll talk about trunk and mostly retroperitoneal tumors. So, as regards the extremities uh, and all uh, localizations, as you know, we have uh, the very recent uh, clinical practice guidelines from the European Society of Medical Oncology. And just before we start uh, the lecture, uh, I would like to uh, discuss a little with you uh, the different levels of evidence and the grades of recommendation. As you know, there are five levels of evidence. Le evidence level of evidence one is when we have at least one large randomized control tire of good methodology or meta-analysis of well-conducted randomized trials without heterogeneity. Level two is small randomized trials or large randomized trials with a suspicion of bias. Uh, level three is the prospective cohort studies. Level four is retrospective cohort studies or some case control studies. And level five is when you have studies without control group, some case reports and experts opinion. The grades of recommendation from A to E. A is a strong evidence for efficacy with substantial clinical benefits, strongly recommended. B is strong or moderate evidence for efficacy, but with a limited clinical benefit. It's, we should say that's practices that are generally recommended. Grade C is insufficient evidence for efficacy or benefit, does not outweigh the risk of disadvantages. Grade D is moderate evidence against efficacy or for adverse outcome, generally not recommended, and grade E is not recommended. So, as we said, we will deal with sarcomas from A to uh, Z. We start with grade of recommendation A for diagnosis. For the extremity, uh, soft tissue sarcoma, the main imaging modality is magnetic, res magnetic resonance imaging. Of course, you can do standard radiographs and CT scanners. They may be useful to rule out bone tumor, to detect if you have a bone erosion that could also happen in a soft tissue sarcoma, or sometimes when we have a, a bone tumor, but with a big uh, soft tissue contingent, you might uh, need a CT scanner just to, to be sure that it's an osseous tumor and not a soft tissue tumor. You need CT scanners to show calcifications, which are not seen in uh, magnetic resonance imaging, and to rule out a myositis ossificans. And once you have the good uh, imaging, then you have to establish your diagnosis. GORA and the standard approach to diagnosis consists of biopsies. But what kind of biopsies? Multiple core needle biopsies by using at least 14 or 16 G coaxial needles. There are biopsies that are done under echographic or CT scanner guidance. And you have to put your needle uh, 
on the axis of the tumor there where you plan to do your incision later. It is to say that a pathological expert review and validation is required in all cases when the original diagnosis was made outside the reference center. A recent uh, study from the French uh, sarcoma group showed that there are discrepancies of about 20% between reports coming from outside reference centers and reports of expert pathologists. So we said that the uh, biopsy that should be done is a percutaneous guided biopsy. Incisional biopsy is, I may say, prohibited because there are many complications as hematoma, ectopic scar, and tumor infiltration of the scar, which might necessitate a much bigger operation than we would have done if we had done an um, percutaneous biopsy. For small tumors, less than uh, three centimeters and superficial tumors, uh, of this size, an excisional biopsy may be a practical option. An evaluation of the tissue viability may be done so that we are sure that our biopsy is adequate, that we have enough tissue to have a diagnosis. But frozen section technique for immediate diagnosis is discouraged. As you know, in order to establish a diagnosis for sarcomas, you don't only need your microscopic view, you need immunohistochemistry, and very, very often you need molecular biology. So you're not supposed to expect to have a diagnosis with simple frozen sections. We have to keep in mind that percutaneous biopsy may underestimate the tumor malignancy grade because many tumors are heterogeneous. But when you plan to, he, to give an adjuvant, a preoperative treatment, you can be helped by the radiological imaging and the patient's history in order to estimate the malignancy grade. For example, if you see necrosis on imaging and you have a grade two and your necrosis is important, you can think that Grade two is at least a grade two and could be a grade three for the tumor. So what's important for dealing with sarcomas from A to Z is your strategy. And in order to establish a good strategy, you have to have a multidisciplinary tumor board which will see the patient beforehand, before treatment is initiated. Because with your colleagues in the multidisciplinary tumor boat, you will assess the extension of the disease. You will discuss the surgery that you're planning to do. What can you have as margins? which guarantee good margins, guarantee the good quality of your surgery. You will discuss the indication and the modalities of radiotherapy. You will discuss the type, the timing of radiotherapy. And it's the same for chemotherapy if there is an indication for a preoperative treatment. And you can also discuss other techniques as isolated lymph perfusion. This is a 15-year-old French paper coming from the south of France, France that studied the conformity to the clinical practice guidelines and the multidisciplinary management and outcome of treatment for soft tissue sarcomas. You might be rather disappointed to find out that this paper found that only 
seven percent of patients presented were presented at multidisciplinary tumor board before they were operated on and the initial surgery was R0 only in one-fourth of patients, R1 in almost 30%, and R2 in complete surgery at, for, for, at 45% of cases. As regards the conformity to recommendations, surgical te techniques were conform only in 52%, and radiotherapy and chemotherapy at higher levels, but mostly because patients received radiotherapy and chemotherapy after having been operated on in a non-adapted way, and at that time they were presented to the multidisciplinary tumor board. Things have changed. This is a recent paper of the uh, uh, French sarcoma group. Uh, NetSARC is the, um, uh, the, uh, net, the network of the expert sarcoma centers in France. And so in this paper, you have 12,528 patients, 42% were presented to multidisciplinary tumor board before initiation of treatment and 57.8% uh, after initiation of treatment. And you can see that for local relapse-free survival and for relapse-free survival, there is a significant difference between patients that have been presented to the multidisciplinary tumor board before and after initiation of treatment. So keep in mind, patients with sarcomas should be presented to the multidisciplinary tumor board before treatment is initiated, before treatment is decided. Your strategy has to be decided at the multidisciplinary tumor board. And when you have your file ready and you present your patient to the multidisciplinary tumor board, you will start with assessing the extension of the disease. The standard is to do for all patients with sarcomas at least a thoracic CT scanner. This is the standard imaging. For certain histotypes, as for example, myxoid liposarcomas or leiomyosarcomas, you have to do an abdominal CT scanner. As you know, uh, myxoid liposarcomas give, can give metastasis and intra-abdominal metastasis or metastasis of soft tissues. Many centers perform nowadays whole body MRI. Or if you have a small peripheral leiomyosarcoma, you might think that it's a metastasis of another tumor that's not clinically evident. So in that case, you have to do a PET scanner. Here on the left, you can see a pancreatic metastasis of a limb leiomyosarcoma. And this is an abdominal MRI. On the right, you have a thoracic CT scanner of a lady that had a malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor and on the, sac on the sacral area and presented with voluminous multiple pulmonary metastasis. So the assessment of the extension of the disease changes your strategy. So you did your biopsy, your expert pathologist say that the tumor you're dealing with is a sarcoma and the assessment of the extension says that you have a primary tumor and that is not metastatic. 
In the case of a low-grade tumor, or a superficial tumor, or a small tumor, when the surgery that you have to do is non-mutilating, and in order to perform it, you have no anatomical constraints, you can proceed to surgery. This is an example of well-differentiated liposarcoma that, as you see on the MRI, is perfectly resectable. It's quite a small tumor and there are no anatomical constraints. You have no vascular uh, structures, no uh, nerves uh, very proximal to the tumor. You can perform your surgery without problem. If you see a patient that, he, that comes to you after an excisional biopsy or if you performed an excisional biopsy, as we said, for a small superficial tumor, then you have always to re-excise the biopsy site in order to have good margins. Radiotherapy will not palliate an inadequate surgery. And you come to your surgery. Your margins are the quality of your surgery. And not only margins. You have to avoid any tumor rupture. So the standard surgical procedure is a one block wide excision with microscopically negative margins, or zero margins. This implies that you have to take out the tumor with a ream of normal tissue around it. So, in order to do it, you have to be sure that the tumor you're dealing with is a sarcoma. Because if your tumor is benign, if it's a sample lipoma or a schwannoma, you have no need to resect a ream of normal tissue. So, any unplanned surgery is by definition marginal. You will not take a good ream of normal tissue all around the tumor if you don't know that you have to do with sarcoma. So, here once again we see the importance of preoperative biopsy, which should be done to establish diagnosis. The imaging is not specific for sarcoma, and you have to expect reconstructions. This type of surgery has must be done by a specifically trained in sarcoma surgeon. This is, this is an example of a deep soft tissue tumor. Uh, the preoperative biopsy said that it's an undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma. The case was discussed in a multidisciplinary tumor board and preoperative radiotherapy was indicated. The patient was operated afterwards and it was an 11 centimeter tumor an R0 resection and the smallest margin was a ream of muscles measuring 6 millimeters and you had 20% viable cells. Sorry, there is... Yeah, okay. So, here we come again to underline that you have to do your surgery after percutaneous biopsy. And actually, you have to remove the tumor without seeing it. That's the art of surgery in sarcomas. You don't see your tumor. You remove it while it's covered by a ream of normal tissue. This is another example of an 
undifferentiated pleiomorphic rad domain of a pleiomorphic rab domain circum of grade three nine centimeters r zero resection and the smallest margin is the inferior margin of five millimeters it's a very good margin because it's muscle so you have good tissue but as we said you have to do a one block resection if a piecemeal or a fragmented resection is done if an r1 resection is done or if a enucleation has been performed and, and when an enucleation is performed it is performed when we don't know when we ignore the identity the, the, the histology of the tumor and enucleation is by definition at least r1 in that case you have to dispute the re-excision of the tumor after re-excision has been done in the specimen in 50 percent of cases you will find a residual tumor and as said before piecemeal resection r1 resection or enucleation is not an indication for radiotherapy radiotherapy will not palliate a non-adapted surgery you have to do your re-excision this is an example of consecutive hoops surgery uh, in 2010 a superficial small tumor six centimeters it would be easy to resect correctly if the histology was known but it was not known so it was it had a hoops unplanned surgery and it was a layer sarcoma of grade one r1 resection the re-excision was done but it was done by non-specialized surgeon and no imaging was done so a quick re-evolution happened the file was not discussed in the multidisciplinary tumor board and the disease evaluated you see when this first mri was done you had already a tumor that invaded the muscles so at that time the patient the file of the patient was in a multidisciplinary tumor board and preoperative radiotherapy was indicated the patient was operated afterwards with a large surgery and which necessitated a free flap and a cutaneous flap for this important deficit that was created this time surgery was r0 with a minimum margin of 14 millimeters because it was done in an expert certain center after multidisciplinary tumor board by experts and eight years later 2018 patient is well with no evidence of disease what about radiotherapy there are to this day two randomized trials regarding radiotherapy quite old the first one the, uh, this paper of Pisters and Brennan 1996 it's a prospective randomized trial of adjuvant brachytherapy in soft tissue sarcoma in uh, figure two you have the plot of local recurrence for patients that had high grade lesions and in figure three the plot for local recurrence for patients with low grade lesions as you see the difference is important for high grade lesions but not important for low grade tumors so this paper concluded that adjuvant brachytherapy improves local control after complete resection of soft tissue sarcoma and this improvement is limited to patients with high-grade histopathology but this is not associated 
with a significant reduction in distant metastasis or improvement of disease-specific survival. Overall survival was the same after or without brachytherapy. And this is the second prospective study of benefit of adjuvant radiation therapy in the treatment of soft tissue sarcomas. It's a paper of Young and Rosenberg. So, in the, the figure, in figure one, you have local recurrence free survival for all, all patients that were randomized to receive or not receive adjuvant postoperative uh, radiotherapy, and you see that the difference is significant. In figure T, Two, you have patients with high-grade locally resectable uh, extremely soft tissue tumors with, ra with, with randomized treatment with surgery and adjuvant chemotherapy versus surgery, adjuvant chemotherapy and radiotherapy. And you see that the difference is important and locker recurrence occurred only in the absence of radiotherapy. In, in, the, in the last figure you have the local recurrence free survival of patients with low grade extremity tumors treated with surgery alone or surgery with adjuvant radiotherapy and you see that the difference is not significant. Once again, the overall survival was the same. So if we want to conclude about radiotherapy, for high grade deep tumors of more than five centimeters with a good level of evidence and a good grade of recommendations, the standard treatment is surgery and radiotherapy. For high-grade, deep, small tumors, surgery and radiotherapy, some exceptions might be discussed in multidisciplinary tumor boat in order not to perform radiotherapy. When you have high-grade, superficial, tumors of more than five centimeters, you can add radiotherapy in selected cases. For low-grade, deep, big tumors, radiotherapy should be discussed in a multidisciplinary committee considering the anatomical site and the related expected seclae. For all cases, exception may be made, but only after discussion in the multidisciplinary tumor board, which will take into account several variables as regards the patient, the tumor, the tumor location, the anatomical constraints, and all these variables that could compromise uh, the evolution. This is a randomized trial that compares pre-operative versus post-operative radiotherapy done by Brian O'Sullivan, 2002. And it shows that local control and survival are not influenced by the timing of radiotherapy. What is influenced is early and late complications. If you do your radiotherapy in the preoperative setting, you have more acute toxicity and most, most import, more important, post-operative morbidity. When the radiotherapy is given in the post-operative setting, you have most late toxicity as fibrosis and edema. Anyway, the five-year local control is identical regardless of the timing of the radiotherapy. It's the type of complications that differs. And this is a review that summarizes radiotherapy for the management of soft tissue sarcomas of the extremities. And as we said before, you have always to regard Reconstructive surgery. Extremity sarcomas can be very voluminous, and the deficit that's left behind is important. Here you see, you can see the bone, you can see the vessels, and as you can understand, 
this opening will not close and you cannot just close uh, the cutaneous tissue all over the bone. You have to cover it with flaps. And in this case, this was a pleomorphic sarcoma. The patient needed a free flap. It's a latissimus dorsi free flap that was performed. This another case of a, a girdle sarcoma which necessitated a large surgery and you have to cover your uh, uh, you have to cover the, uh, what you left behind with a flap. Here is a uh, tram flap or erectus abdominis flap, a pediculated flap. This is another case of a myxoid liposarcoma which received neoadjuvant radiotherapy with a very good response and as you know after radiotherapy you have to cover what you leave behind with a flap. In this case a muscular flap was done and the skin graft was put in place in a second time. So this stage classification and risk assessment normogram that exists is an application that you can have on your mobile phone and it's called circulator and you can uh, classify and assess the risk of uh, your, uh, the tumor of your patient. In the case when you have a high grade, a deep, a locally advanced sarcoma that would need a mutilating surgery and anatomical constraints are present and or when it is a recurrence, you cannot proceed to surgery at first, but at that time you have to discuss a neoadjuvant treatment in multidisciplinary tumor board and this will be done according to presentation. You can discuss of neoadjuvant chemotherapy or an isolated lipid perfusion or even radiotherapy. What about neoadjuvant chemotherapy? Before we go to neoadjuvant chemotherapy, let's see this uh, paper who did a pooled analysis of the two EORTC phase three clinical trials for adjuvant chemotherapy. As you see, here you have the line of patients that had an R0 resection and chemotherapy and here you have patients with R0 resection without chemotherapy and as you see these are patients that had radical surgery the uh, adding the addition of chemotherapy did not change uh, the overall survival when the surgery was marginal, R1, the addition of chemotherapy ameliorated the overall uh, survival. This is a very important paper that discussed the histotype tailored neoadjuvant chemotherapy versus standard chemotherapy in patients with high-risk soft tissue and it was an international open-label randomized control phase 3 multicentral trial. This trial was designed to show the superiority of high type tailored chemotherapy versus standard chemotherapy uh, based on anthracyclines, but it showed exactly the contrary. As you see, patients that had standard chemotherapy had a better overall survival than patients that had a tailored chemotherapy. Here you see how it was randomized. The randomization was done between two types of chemotherapy, standard chemotherapy and histology chemotherapy, and then patients had surgery with or without radiotherapy. However, this evidence corresponds to an interim plant analysis 
within a trial that was statistically conceived to test the superiority of a histology-driven chemotherapy. The trial has now been amended to test the superiority of standard chemotherapy over the histology-driven chemotherapy at the time of final analysis. So, with a level of evidence 2 and a grade of recommendation C, neoadjuvant chemotherapy with anthracyclines plus ifosfamide for at least three cycles can be viewed as an option for the high-risk individual patient. This is a case of female, of 57-year-old uh, female that had a UPS and differentiates to common grade 3, no metastasis. She had two cycles of adriamycin aphosphamide with a progression. The tumor was three centimeters bigger after the chemotherapy. So it was discussed in the multidisciplinary tumor board to discuss if we could do radiotherapy before or afterwards. When you do your chemotherapy afterwards, in case of surgical morbidity, you might risk not to be able to deliver it. And this risk is not negligible, mostly when uh, reconstructions are to be done and flaps. If you perform your radiotherapy preoperatively, you're certain to do it and finish it. Of course, you increase the theoretic risk, theoretical risk of delayed wound healing, but in practice, not because there's already the need for a flap to cover vessels. So this patient had preoperative radiotherapy with a good response and she was operated on. She had a vascular resection and a nerve resection with a vascular graft, a sartorius flap in order to reconstruct the inguinal ligament, a pedicle rectus abdominis flap and a nomentoplasty. It was a 15 centimeter tumor, R0 resection, the femoral nerve was included, the, ver the vessels was partially included, and we had 8% of viable cells. Last time in December 2018, the patient had no evidence of disease. These are three other cases. Here you have a second recurrence of malignant peripheral nerve cyst tumor in a pre-irradiated field, and here we had the indication of an, uh, an ILP. Here you have a UPS grade three post hoop surgery. And for this patient, it was indicated to do preoperative chemotherapy. Here you have a li myxoid liposarcoma with no route cells, which responds very well to radiotherapy. So here the patient had radiotherapy. Mutilating surgery may be of choice in some cases. Options for limb preserving surgery can be discussed with the patients and they include hypothermic isolated limb perfusion with TNF alpha and melphalan or neoadjuvant chemotherapy and or radiotherapy. And here is the setting for the isolated limb perfusion. You isolated the limb from the rest of the body and you can cannulate, you, you have to cannulate the artery and the vein and the circulation is you have an extracorporeal circulation in order to administer concentrations that are 20%, 20 times higher than uh, when you give it by intravenous way. This is the paper uh, of uh, Lanston Oncology 2016 for the external validation of two nomograms in order to predict overall survivor and occurrence of distant metastasis in adults after surgical dissection of localized soft tissue sarcomas in the extremities, it was a retrospective study, and the independent prognostic factors for overall survivor was age, tumor size, grade, and histological subtype, and for distant metastasis was tumor size, grade, and histological subtype. The 10-year overall survival was 73%, and the occurrence of Distant metastasis at 10 years was 25%. This is the paper and the paper of our team, which shows that local control does not impact survival. Here you have the literature overview, uh, the five-year 
uh, local recurrence rate is at about 10% and the five-year overall survival at about 75%. So in this case, predictors of worse overall survival were grade three, Lyomia sarcoma uh, histology, male gender and age more than 60 years. Tumor size, margin status and local recurrence were not. When patients required, required a re-excision, when residual cells were present, they correlated with overall survivor, but not with, but not local recurrence. So, specific subtypes and the margin size less than one millimeter were correlated with higher local recurrence, but neither the margin status nor local recurrence affected overall survival. This is a recent paper of the Fred Sarcoma group that shows that surgery, when it is done in reference centers, improves survival of sarcoma patients. 35, almost 36,000 patients of whom almost 10,000 were operated in the uh, uh, specialty, uh, the expert centers ne French net, uh, network, 155 different histologic subtypes. And you see that when surgery is done in expert centers, local relapse free survival and overall survival, event free survival and overall survivor are better. So surgery in expert centers is an independent prognostic factor for local recurrence free survival, disease free survival, and overall survivor. And here we can say that we have discussed extremity sarcomas. We will now pass to retroperitoneal tumors. The strategy is the same. You start with diagnosis because the patient will not come with label, I have a sarcoma. The patient will come with a big retroperitoneal tumor. You start with serum tumor, mar tumor markers and percutaneous biopsy. All these tumors are not sarcomas. For the germ cell tumor, your serum tumor markers, AFP, LDH, and uh, HCG could have given you the response. For the rest, you have to do your percutaneous biopsy. These are the guidelines um, that tell you that you have to do biopsy with a 40, at least a 14 or 16 gauge a coaxial needle. The risk of needle tract seeding is minimal and it should not be a reason to avoid biopsy. Nonetheless, the pathway of the biopsy should be carefully planned to minimize contamination and complications. Open or rapaloscopic biopsies should be avoided. And this is the paper from the Transatlantic Working Retroperitoneal Sarcoma Working Group that says that you have to do your biopsy in almost every case. You can not do it when the imaging is pathognomonic and there is only one case. It's heterogeneous, dedifferentiated and well-differentiated liposarcoma and when preoperative treatment is not planned. The pathway of the biopsy is retroperitoneal. No surgical biopsy, as we said for extremities, it's the same. Excisional surgical biopsy is prohibited. It may lead to dramatic situations. When you do your biopsy for lipomatous tumors, as in this case, we have two retroperitoneal, well-differentiated lipomatous tumors. They could be either lipomas, yes, they exist, big retroperitoneal lipomas exist, or very well-differentiated liposarcomas. Simple pathology does not give the response. You have to do molecular biopsy and you have to perform a phase to search the amplification of the MDM2 gene. Here you see that 
this gene is the pink spots they're amplified so here you have a negative fish so you have a lipo lipoma but this tumor is a liposarcoma and as you can see this implicates a completely different surgery your second step is to tailor your surgery to histology and for that you have to discuss your case in a multidisciplinary sarcoma board this is a case of Ewing sarcoma which received neoadjuvant chemotherapy with a very good response the type of surgery didn't change in this case it implicated a, a compartmental resection with uh, a Whipple procedure but as you can imagine doing surgery in this setting is much easier than in this setting again this tumor it was biopsized it's not a sarcoma it's a dysmoid tumor after because of the localization medical treatment was done and you see that the response was excellent in this young woman the surgery would have been mutilating and radiotherapy in this localization would have produced important sequelae so you have a retroperitoneal tumor when it's a fatty tumor well differentiated it might be a, either a myolipoma or an angiomyolipoma in this case you have to perform a limited surgery if it's a well differentiated liposarcoma you have to do a compartmental surgery when your tumor is not fatty you have your positive serum markers and they said you're you have a germinal tumor okay you do your medical treatment when serum tumor markers are negative you perform your biopsy and you assess the extension of the disease when you have a specific chemosensitive histology you perform a neoadjuvant chemotherapy and then you operate on your patient when you have other retroperitoneal sarcomas that are not chemosensitive the the standard is surgery first a large compartmental surgery if your tumor is benign you can either do a limited surgery or you can adopt a wait and see um, strategy or proceed to a medical treatment how do you planify your surgery in order to well planify your surgery you have to recognize your tumor and to recognize your tumor you have to be very careful when you assess your imaging this important paper discusses the pitfalls and diagnostic algorithm that you should use in order not to underestimate your tumor the most current uh, common pitfall is to underestimate the well differentiated part of a de-differentiated liposarcoma and this will lead you to an R2 resection and R2 resection as you know equals tumor rupture equals piecemeal resection and you transfer immediately your patient to a palliative setting in this case the tumor that was seen was this one but this is not the whole tumor this is just the de-differentiated part of this well differentiated and de-differentiated liposarcoma what did the surgeon do he removed only this part of the tumor the rest postoperatively is still in place this is a tumor rupture so this patient has a high risk almost a certainty for a sarcomatosis here it might be more tricky is this the tumor this is part of a tumor this is the whole tumor and this is quite tricky because you see that the well differentiated part resembles a lot to the normal fatty tissue of the other side 
another a tourist action. Your second step is to anticipate specific anatomic extensions that you have to take in account in order to planify your surgical approach, and that's the inguinal canal, the obturator foramen, the sciatic notch, vertebral foramen, again the inguinal canal and the inguinal ligament. These tumors are very difficult. Or the diaphragm. Check your bone infiltration. Here you see this tumor. But if you do your MRI, you can see also that the osseous tissue is affected. You do your biopsy and it's a chondrosarcoma with a very important contingent of soft tissue. Fourth step, check your superior mesentery cavity. When SMA is not free, is probably the only formal surgical contraindication to surgery. Here you see the tumor is very important. It's a panabdominal tumor. But when you assess well your superior mesenteric artery, you see that it's operable. Here are two papers of our team regarding particular localizations. The, this one uh, is for uh, sciatic notch sarcoma that need a simultaneous combined arterial and posterior approach. And this is a review article discussing my major vascular resections in retroperitoneal sarcoma. So, you have to do an one unblock compartmental resection. And as you see, the local regional relapse free survival and the overall survival are influenced by the good uh, quality of surgery. So, when you have a visceral sarcoma like a GIST, you do an organ specific surgery. But this is different from retroperitoneal sarcomas, where we have to extrapolate philosophy from limbs. As we said, we have to do a compartmental resection. These are the first two papers that was, were published in the same volume of GCO in 2009, one of our group, Dr. Bombolo, and all of the Italian group, that showed that the, the indicated uh, surgical technique is a uh, compartmental re uh, resection without practically seeing the tumor. This is a very important paper of uh, uh, the Harvard team that shows that you have to adopt a rationale for the selective organ resection. What does it show that when the reasons for what for which the reasons for which you reject contiguous organs in retroperitoneal sarcoma is because you either suspect an invasion or the tumor or the organ is the origin of the tumor or the tumor involves the end organ vascular supply or the organ is encased or the organ is adherent to the tumor or you have to do the organ you have to re uh, reject the proximity organ for in order to have margins well, this paper showed that when you suspect an invasion, all histologies together, this is true in about 68, 65%. For well-differentiated liposarcomas, it's always true. For dedifferentiated liposarcomas, for 50% of cases. So, as we said, Compartimental one block resection is what's indicated, but you have to be careful how to do it. And these are the recommendations of how to do it. This is an example of a left retroperitoneal dedifferentiated liposarcoma, which was treated with a compartimental resection. This is the tumor. This is the specimen that includes the tumor, 
the left colon, the left uh, kidney, the aponeurosis of the psoas muscle, and in this case, a good part of the psoas muscle, as you see here. This is a case of right retroperitoneal dedifferentiate liposarcoma that the resection included the tumor, the right colon, the right kidney, and a duodenopancreatic resection, as you see here. In this case, we did a total pancreatectomy in order to avoid a fistula on a soft tissue pancreas. This is a topic that we can discuss if you want. This is a very big retroperitoneal, well-differentiated liposarcoma. And as results, what's the results of all this? This is the fir a first paper concomitantly with from the French and Italian team. It shows that the mortality of such type of aggressive surgery is 3% and the rate of reintervention 12%. Overall survival at five years is above, is at about 65% and abdominal recurrence at about 22% with distant recurrences at about 24%. And this is a paper from the uh, transatlantic retroperitoneal sarcoma uh, working group. More than a thousand patients. It shows that the five year overall survival is 67%. And if we compare it with the SEER database, where the five year overall survival is 47%, you hear that you have an overall survivor that gains four years of life. It's enormous. And the price for this is mortality of 1.8%, important morbidity, Clavian Dindo more than three, grade three, 16.4%. And in the multivariated analysis, the prognostic factors are age, number of resected organs, and requirement for transfusion. The postoperative morbidity is increased when you reject more than three organs and when the pattern of resection includes pancreas or vessels. These are the results from the transatlantic working group and these are almost the same results from the paper that I showed before. So when you have more than three organs and when you have pancreas or vessels, the risk is more important. Another risk factor is the nutritional status. This is a paper of our institution that shows when nutritional status is good, you have less complications and the, the hospitalization time is shorter. Again, the paper with 1,007 patients, outcomes by histology. As we said, overall survival is 67% five years, and tumors that do better are well-differentiated liposarcomas. Here you have lyomyosarcomas, the black line, and here you have dedifferentiated liposarcomas of grade three. Local recurrence and distant metastasis by uh, histology. Uh, it is important to say here that you have to notice the difference between the difference liposarcomas of grade two and grade three. Grade two uh, 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 are uh, um, their evolution is local regional, just like. Uh, well-differentiated liposarcomas, while grade three, they can give distant metastasis as leiomyosarcomas. Another prognostic factor is the specialized surgeon. In this paper that we showed before, you can see that the difference between <coughs> patients operated on by specialized and non-specialized surgeons is important. And this is a paper that discuss discusses the treatment challenges in and outside network setting for retroperitoneal sarcoma. This is a very recent study from the French sarcoma group. Retroperitoneal tumors 
almost 3,000 patients treated between 2010 and 2017, and we see that P patients that were treated in uh, reference centers had a much better local progression-free survival, a progression-free survival, and an overall survival. As regards radiotherapy in retroperitoneal sarcoma, this is the STRAS uh, uh, study. Uh, uh, this uh, a phase two, three random, a phase three randomized study uh, that was directed by Dr. Sylvie Bonvalo and Dr. Rick Hess. And patients were randomized between standard treatment with, with surgery and uh, radiotherapy in the preoperative setting, followed by the surgery arm. And it showed that for all patients, abdominal recurrence free survival was, almost, was the same. There was no significant difference. But for liposarcoma, for the liposarcoma subgroup, there was a significant difference. So this uh, randomized trial concluded that the additional morbidity associated with preoperative radiotherapy, which was mostly IMRT, was acceptable. There was not impact of radiotherapy on overall survival, with the primary endpoint being uh, abdominal recurrence free survival, and for median with a median follow-up of 43 months, uh, abdominal recurrence free survival was similar in both groups, but it was significantly better after radiotherapy in the liposarcoma subgroup. High-grade sarcomas and leiomyosarcomas sarcomas do not seem to benefit from preoperative radiotherapy. And it concluded that further follow-up is needed. As regards recurrence, very shortly I would tell you that for local recurrence, for distant metastasis, and even when both are present, patients that can be operated on do better than patients that cannot be operated on. And in multivariated, multivariate analysis for patients with local recurrence, the prognostic factors are the delay between surgery and appearance of recurrence, and if the patient has been operated on or not. This is a well differentiated liposarcoma, a panabdominal, a big tumor that was operated on in 2001. This is a first elapse in 2005. The patient was operated on, and 10 years later, there's no sign of disease. And if one wanted to conclude, we can say that the unblocked resection of the tumor and the contiguous organs offers the best local control in retrospective studies, but a balance must be reached between the expected morbidity and the clinical benefit according to the number and nature of the organs that will be potentially, potentially rejected. This type of surgery is most appropriate in histological subtypes for which local control is the main issue. And conclusion, generally for all sarcomas, always think about multidisciplinary team in sarcoma centers, the importance of MRI CT and preoperative biopsy to confirm that surgery is indicated and to decide optimal extent of the century of the surgery, do not operate on your patients without diagnosis. For extremities, wide excision followed by radiotherapy is a standard treatment for high grade, deep, and more than five centimeter lesions. For retroperitoneal sarcomas, preoperative radiation therapy in resectable tumors has been investigated in the STRAS clinical trial. Abdominal recurrence free survival is the same in both groups, but it was significantly better in the liposarcoma subgroup. High-grade sarcomas and leiomyia sarcomas do not seem to benefit from radiotherapy in the neoadjuvant setting, and for high-risk patients, do discuss neoadjuvant treatments in multidisciplinary tumor boards. Thank you very much for your participation and for your attention. I will be happy to answer to your questions if we still have time. Thank you very much. We'll be
will be there any questions? Yes, I do have a question about the uh, uh, multidisciplinary um, sarcoma center, I mean, team that yeah. has, yeah. So, um, you know, most of the audience, part of the audience that's gonna be participating in, uh, you know, what one of the work is thinking about how we can make surgery, surgical oncology more accessible to patients in low and middle income countries, like in Africa, like in South America and uh, you know, Eastern, Eastern Asia. So the question, my question is more uh, in such centers, in resource, resource limited settings where they may not have a you know, multidisciplinary team. Uh, do you have any suggestions? Are there any, you know, yeah, I see your question. It's it's it's, uh, it's Mr. Rengua. It's now is it you? That's yeah. correct. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, nice to meet you on the internet. Thank you yeah. for the question. It and it is a very very important question. Before mm -hmm. I come to your question, I would say that even in countries that are not so poor, mm -hmm. it's not always easy to have refer ex expert centers, and mm -hmm. there have been international meetings and papers that. Consensus that uh, consensus that discuss what is a reference center and what it should have as experts. Mm -hmm. I can understand that in uh, countries that have low incomes, uh, it can be difficult. But yeah. I think we can start by uh, building up a multidisciplinary team. Mm -hmm. If each doctor does not decide on his own is the first step hmm. and for multidisciplinary tumor board you have to have a surgeon a medical oncologist a radiotherapist a radiologist a pathologist uh, and all all, all all of the other specialties i think a first step is to get professionals ex professionals together mm -hmm. and you know uh, then it depends upon the population, but for I know for a, for a country of uh, 10 million people, you don't need more than one or two expert centers. Okay. Okay. I think that the first step is to get people together and then try to educate uh, uh, doctors that are all over the country. You mm -hmm. have think. Think about sarcoma is the first step, and it's a big step. If you think that your tumor might be a sarcoma, don't deal it, don't deal with it on your own without doing a biopsy. Mm -hmm. The first step, discussing with colleagues. First step is think about sarcoma. Mm -hmm. Discuss with colleagues, do a biopsy. It will be already a great step towards good results. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah, the message is, colleagues, let's get together. Let's think together. Let's plan a strategy together. Don't decide on your own. When you have tumors that you don't know what they are, when you think it's sarcoma, discuss with colleagues. Send them to people who do more about that. And, of course, Expert centers that already exist in other countries, we will all be, always be happy to help, to give advice, to help you with difficult cases. Right, yeah. I think that's a really important message because um, some of the, you know, in most of the cultures, I, I'd say, because I'm, I'm very familiar with the cultures, like in Africa, you know, like people like to work by themselves in silos. So I think it's a very important message to be able to communicate that, to say, you know, first yeah. of all, think yeah. about how we can work as a team. You're, you know, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. It's a good message. Okay, great. Bill, do you have any announcements? Or? Uh, no? No. Uh, Not yet. No uh, new announcements as of right now. Um, we will be continuing again uh, next week 